<laughs> anyway, what can I do? Sorry, boys, I had to get my. Uh, oh, thank you. you get, well, you didn't want any drinks, so. That's fine. I would have got you a coffee. For the listeners who are wondering, Derek just got us a chocolate. Oh, yeah. So. We, uh, yeah, but it comes with conditions like that you don't ask me any hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, well, yeah, we'll we'll get underway. Yeah. So uh, something we've tried to do is start recording in the lead up, in the minute. So um, we're currently recording. That's fine. Yeah. It's not a problem. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Derek, it's great to have you here today. Thank I do you for meeting us. I all the time when I meet people. In fact, I remember doing it once in South Africa. We were in South Africa making a, a program for a week. And I was interviewing this guy, I can't remember his name, but he's Irish. And he was, I think he played for the Irish rugby team. But during the apartheid uh, time in South Africa, when there was no sporting events being played against South African teams, he went out there and he played and all this kind of stuff. And he's a big radio uh, presenter out there and a really very influential guy. And we arrived at his complex. Literally, they live in complexes in South Africa. And he's in Johannesburg. And I was recording from the moment I pressed the intercom. Mm. His wife did not like that at all. <laughs> she was totally unimpressed by the I fact that I was recording yeah. when yeah. the yeah. moment they I met him and everything. Know it, I suppose it could be. Yeah. Like we, we've had no issues with it. We did it with a couple of our interviews. Just hit record so you kind of get yeah. that more yeah. that natural. It is more natural, yeah. The introduction. More. Well, we did nearly get a nice controversial comment out of Dave Fanning, but I think yeah. Dave, I think the whole interview was just littered with those. Yeah, we got more. I was going to say the other. Obviously, not being controversial. Though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, we are in Nero Cafe, just off Stevens's Green. Um, it is a lovely Thursday morning, and we are joined it's here. Cold. It's 19 degrees. I never thought I'd be saying that, but I'm actually oh, feeling the cold, cold today. Cold. It is. Like I'm feeling it. It's I've a, been complaining about the heat for the last few yeah. days, and now I'm actually feeling the well, cold. It's my only topic of conversation the last couple of weeks. It's everybody's topic of conversation. It's Ireland. It's weather. You shouldn't want a little corner of the sun. <laughs> Go on, ask away then. Um, Give me a little bit of background to you guys, though. What is it, what is it for? What okay. It yeah, yeah, fair. Um, because I so, wasn't sure, I just agreed. <laughs> so, um, when we started college together, we all joined uh, DCU's Media Production Society. Okay. And one leg of the Media Production Society is DCU FM, which is our college radio okay. show. We all signed up for uh, assigned shows that they give the first years coming in, so they get you used to um, using the equipment and stuff like that. You're put with completely random people, and you're said, you have an hour slot, do what you want. Okay, very good. So the three of us came together. And we uh, I think you're forgetting something. It was actually Gav and I initially, yeah, and yeah. this guy uh, just gave a crash. Like, yeah. like he uh, has done since we met him. But. I, I, I got a slot that I wasn't, I wasn't too enamoured with, so uh, I asked could I get a switch. Okay. And um, the deputy manager, Sinead, switched me on to these lovely chaps because it was okay, just the two good. of them. So without, so without asking us, of course. And is the radio yeah. station ongoing at the moment? Is it still there? Um, no, not, not during the summer. Years. It goes off oh, there, okay. and especially now because we're getting the new student, uh, student centre, we're getting a new studio. Okay, very good. So, um, yeah, I think we're off, uh, it's offline at the moment, but um, we had a few shows, we had a bit of fun, it was kind of random, and then one day, I can't remember which one of us had the idea, but one of us had the idea to interview one of our lecturers, Roddy, because he'd become kind of a cult hero really, really in, our, in our Roddy course. Roddy Doyle, is it? No, not quite. <laughs> Roddy Flynn, the he second was teacher, though, isn't he? he? taught English, didn't he? He did, I think, actually, yeah. Um, but we, we, got, we got our lecturer, Roderick Flynn, on. And oh, Roderick. Roderick. <laughs> We're being professional. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, we decided to interview him about various different things like his job obviously and then he's a he's a film nut so we picked his brain about that as well and it got kind of an overwhelming response we weren't really expecting it, people to to take to it as much as as we did but um so you do it as a threesome sort of thing yeah, yeah. Th three presenters and what's the show called in conversation three amigos no no it's actually <laughs> not the three amigos and then yeah like off the back of that we saw that people enjoyed it so we said why not try and do an interview so it's just show. chat there's no music in it or anything else like that no, no. okay very good just our voices as music yeah. 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 well you've got good voices you're clear which makes <laughs> the job of editing is so easy yeah. because you're just editing a 40 or 50 minute conversation you're putting out the What's messy the end bit, the messy start bit and then it's it's nearly the, the finished product Product, except when the mic So you just work. let it run? Yeah, yeah pretty much. So, yeah. And that's the quality of that thing like now, when we're recording like this, is it good enough? Uh, yeah, usually it okay? it's, yeah. it's served us well for, I mean, now that we don't have the studio, we've had to start using the Zoom, but it served us well. It's probably past. still better than the studio, because yeah. Yeah, the studio be. worked half of the time. It's so uh, inconsistent. Like we, our first kind of big enough uh, interview was the two Johnnies. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They're a comedy duo from Tipperary. They're not the two boys who were in that ad for one of the telephone. No, no, no. 
Is um, that Vodafone or something like that? No, 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 I don't know them, sorry. Um, well, they're big into the GA and stuff. And Are we you into the GA? Into the GA. <laughs> and uh, we were doing <laughs> a, an InterVarsity broadcast for um, Bardstown, the native Bardstown. Oh, very good. And we asked them to come on, and thankfully they came on. Um, we got the prime slot, and we had a great time. They're two really nice guys, and from there we kind of seen that there was kind of an area for us to move into. Yeah. Where we just kind of yeah. looked to people of interest. And um, why did you ask me? <laughs> <laughs> and you then know people of interest. We all we all went to the DCU Hybrid Awards, which basically Hybrid, hybrid Awards. Hybrid yeah. Awards, yeah. Hybrid. So, hybrid. Yeah. Hybrid, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it's a media awards, and it basically recognises work done by DCU students over the past okay. academic year. And, and we didn't win anything. Various uh, categories. Yeah. We didn't well, win I've, anything. I've won lots of nothing as well. <laughs> Consolation. Completely robbed, of course. Um, mm-hmm. But um, we got some invaluable advice yeah. at that award. Is it a networking as well? Peter Collins of Spina One One O Three Eight. That, and he said that if you're looking for anybody in the industry, their email it's just their first name, doctor, last name, at the place they work. Okay. So for example, except for the BBC. Except, except for the BBC. BBC Actually, because you, what they you, tend to do be, is they put numbers in. You'd be, you'd be wrong people. if you said wow. that for some people because. Uh, I oh, got Dave Fanning was the exception for RT, wasn't he? No, Joe. Joe was the exception. Oh, was he? Yeah. But um, BBC, no, because um, Claire Bowling's email is. Clear that bowling at BBC. Is it, well, okay. that's yeah. what they normally are. Yeah. But what I found is that they put numbers in to Just trick to people off, so you can't yeah. actually contact them. And it's impossible you phone up there and it's almost impossible to get a phone call through. Oh, yeah, yeah. of course. Um, or RC aren't that advanced, so we were, we were lucky. No, yeah, they're, they're fairly Small basic. country, we're only a parish. Yeah. Exactly. So, thankfully, we've called him now and he's a hound for the emails. He's a machine, so. How many emails did you get off him? Do you have a, you should check your spam folder because yeah. I'm sure a couple of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't think Not so. that many. Not that many. <laughs> yeah, somebody was trying to contact me for weeks and I didn't realise, but it was all going into the oh. spam stuff. And then eventually sent it, and it came directly to me. And I said, I'm really sorry, I wasn't ignoring you. <laughs> you mind your phone, it can get stolen. I don't want the green has a. I, I, I know. It's well known for it. It's there every day. <laughs> so, we'll dive in. Um, so, we're just going to do a little quiz, just to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, firstly, and. Um, as with I think our last three interviews, we know the answer to this before we ask. Yeah. But well, at least one of us does. Tea or coffee? <laughs> I ask as you sit in front of me with a. rephrase it. Because oh. it's decaffeinated. Oh. But I, I um, went through a stage where I stopped having coffee completely because I had an incident in Hamburg in Germany where I ended up in hospital. Okay. I thought I was having a heart attack. So did the doctor. How much coffee did you have? I'd been travelling around pretty much for about a month. Okay. On trains. And I was, I don't drink, I don't drink alcohol, very, very rarely, occasionally. I used to, but I get it up years ago, occasionally. And I was just drinking one coffee after another, and I had no concept of how much I'd actually put into my system. <laughs> on top of everything, I'll be drinking a normal day. Yeah. So you're on a train for six and a half hours, and then you arrive in a place, and you're having coffee, and you're coffee, 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 coffee. And one night it just woke me up and like threw me out of the bed almost. Jeez. And they came out, these paramedics came out and put on this that your heart rate is like very high, we're gonna have to take you to the hospital, blah 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 blah. And the guy said, Are you doing drugs? He said, No. <laughs> I said, I don't do drugs, you should be drinking. I said, I actually don't drink. And he said, What is it? I said, I don't know. And then after a while I said, I wonder is it the coffee? Because I had a few palpitations before which I put down to the coffee and it turned out it was. So since then I tend to drink decaffeinated whatever it happens to be. Mm-hmm. Say I just had a coffee. But I suppose coffee is the answer to your question. Okay. Um, it's a long way. We took the long way around. That's the yeah. longest now, tea coffee answer. I but we didn't know the answer I before. took the long way around. Yeah. Well, we can still follow it up. How many sugars? No sugar. No sugar. A bit of milk? Yeah, milk, yeah. No sugar. I tried to cut down on latte as well, even decaffeinated, because the red one said if you have a latte a day, mm-hmm. at the end of the year, it puts on two kilos in weight. And if you think about it, they have like why, do, why do um, calves feed on milk when they're young? It's to fatten them up. Yeah. So yeah. The dairy, the dairy and there. sugar are the enemy. <laughs> How's your cholesterol? It's very high. It was seven point something. It's down to six point five oh, at the moment. That's good. It's only because I have those little drinks every day. Oh, yeah. I've been prescribed statins on three occasions. Have them at home. I've never taken them. Oh. Your ideal weekend away. All things going to plan. Everything no is within your control. Everything, weather, okay, everything. everything. Yeah. Not even this Ryanair. You can even control the Ryanair strike. Right? I don't like know. I'd, 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 have to, I'd have to think. I was possibly going to London tomorrow oh. to go to a place called Tring, which is in Hertfordshire, about an hour on the train outside of London. 
to have a look at a collection of feathers because there was a, a, a guy in 2010, I think it was, who broke into that museum and stole a collection of feathers worth millions because they were from um, Alfred Douglas Wallace collection. He was around the time of Darwin and he stole these exotic feathers. So my ideal weekend, my ideal weekend to answer your question is where I'm going somewhere that I want to be, staying in a really nice hotel, like a really nice hotel with a shower that works and a big shower, not a small shower. <laughs> I tend not to have a bath. Very rarely. I and why did back. you have to specify that the shower works? Have you had a recent incident? No, or? Of times I've stayed in fancy hotels and shit hotels. And usually shit hotels are good showers and fancy name hotels. Name. <laughs> no, not here. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in Ireland. Oh, okay. But hotels, there's one hotel I stay in Manchester called the Holiday Inn, which is just at the... Uh, the airport. Uh, no, it's, it's right out when you get into Manchester Piccadilly train station is just there and yeah. it opened about two years ago and it's a great hotel it's lovely but they've got the water pressure control and there's nothing worse than you stepping into a shower that's spitting at you or oh, just yeah. spraying on you and it's no I, I love a proper shower so a really nice hotel shower something to do during the day i.e. a little bit of work where I'm seeing something I haven't seen before that kind of catches my interest then maybe go and see uh, a show that I want to see ideally go to London do that, stay in a really nice hotel in London, the Hudson or the Kensington, and then go and see the Book of Mormon for the fourth time. Fourth, fourth time? Yeah. What keeps you coming back? Yeah. Huh? What keeps you coming back? It's one of the funniest music I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> everybody gets offended in it. Yeah. If you're religious, you're gay, if you're a woman, everybody gets hammered in it. It's hilarious. You know who the Mormons are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is, I, I avoided seeing this for a long time because I thought, I don't see anything about the Mormons, but somebody said, you're going to love it. Went to see it. It's the funniest musical I have ever seen. It's the same people who wrote one of those, um, My Family or something, the family of one of those animated things on American animated things. Oh, Family Guy or one of these? Family things. Guy. Yeah. And it's the same guys behind that. Oh. <laughs> Now, moving on, a song that grinds your gears. Just, you can't stand it. If, if it comes on the radio, it's off. Everyone's got one. I've got a few. I'm not into music. Really? Mm. And still. So I'd have to think of a song that, that annoys me. Um, one for me personally is Pharrell Williams' Happy. Because it just doesn't make yeah, that me happy. Yeah, that annoys me as well. Yeah. I don't know that. Non stop. Yeah. Oh, and that yeah. other thing, um, it was, I think it was port in Portuguese. <coughs> um, oh, I know. <coughs> was, yeah, kinda, no. yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Last yeah. year, that was every shop I went yeah. into, oh, that was on. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. That so that would be maybe. And there were two versions there. of it too. Oh, sir. It was the original, and then Justin Bieber is a cover. It's too similar. But he, yeah, he did some version of it. So I don't know anything about music, but I suppose those two songs. <coughs> and congratulations, I fucking made that song. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, your original song comes up. And he didn't win, he came second. He was beaten by a girl called Massey Hell, who I think was only 16 or 17 at the time, with a song called La La La. Actually, um, <laughs> talking about that, the Zito, my cousin up here on taking a trip from Monaghan down to Kerry, because they were going to a wedding in Kerry. And I think it was like <coughs> four, Sorry, four or five hour trip ish. He heard Despacito like 11 times. Oh, it's so annoying. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Actually, so there's a song out. That's that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, three guests, living or dead, you'd invite to a dinner party. I've been asked that a million times. Okay. <laughs> I'd say so. We'll go for a million and one. <laughs> and the answers aren't going to suit you. Okay. <laughs> Paul G. Paul G. Sheridan is a friend of mine. Okay. He works in television as a broadcast kind of coordinator is <coughs> production assistant it's not the proper title but <coughs> Paul is the world's greatest living expert of the Eurovision Song Contest <coughs> nothing you could ask him you wouldn't know even more so than yourself I only know a little bit <laughs> this guy has kind of everything you could possibly know he knows <coughs> every song that was ever entered nearly in every national final let alone just the winners in the national competition <laughs> then, he also has this brain. incredible memory. We used to use him on the radio program. And people would phone in and say when they were married, or when their son or daughters were born, or when the father died. And he'd be able to tell them who was number one that day, that year, who wrote the song. He'd be even, even be able to tell you the label number of the record. Oh, that's you, that's, that's a skill or a curse, though. Yeah. <laughs> and the day I was born, he told me was number one was. Engelbert comforting with a song called Please Release Me, Let Me Go. He said, Not the first dance at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd be one because of his extensive knowledge of music and Eurovision Song Contest, plus the fact he is incredibly entertaining. Okay. <laughs> the other person I'd have would probably be um, Planet Me Coffee. 
Oh yeah. Because um, I've known Blonde, we worked on uh, television for years together, a program called Echo Island, which was a kids' program, long before you guys, I think, were even going, how old are you guys? I'm 19. 19 going 20. But why does it always come oh, back yeah. to this? Like, this what age? I'm so a mature student. I know I don't look it, but Tell I am. Me. I'm, uh, I'm 24. 25, so. you, I'm 25 you, you, in September. You, you're well, well done. You only got about 19. Yeah, but not, this program, I would have been on, I think, I can't remember when I did it so long ago, but you guys would have been very young. Mm -hmm. And I presented with uh, Blonnet, and then they had an Irish version. So it was two days a week, so it was kind of Ireland, Ireland's answer to Blue Peter. And I did the English version with Blonnet, and then they brought out an Irish version, which was Blonnet and Dara O'Brien. Oh, Dara O'Brien? Yeah. I didn't even know he did. Was this on RTE? Yeah. I didn't even know Dara O'Brien did And was it still called Echo Island? Yeah, it was called Echo Island. And they should never have got rid of it, because I used to, my, my, and I still maintain, that when you're a certain age as a kid, like we all were, you watch programs, you're, it doesn't have to be too clever. Mm -hmm. It's kind of simple stuff that kids are into. Mm -hmm. Boys and girls, we had a little parakeet, <coughs> and we had kids doing reports of stringers around the country and all that. It doesn't have to be complicated. It didn't have to be computers and everything. You don't need to overcome If you watch Blue Peter, it's not complicated. And it's been on for 40, 50, 60 years, I don't know. So anyway, they went through different presenters and I left and I went to work in radio, so she'd be another. And then, possibly, um, <coughs> Uh, I kind of caught on, on, on the last one, but either Richard Collins, who works with me, he's our zoologist, or Rory Camp, and Mrs. Brown's boy's Rory. Yeah. Oh, so, Rory yeah. <coughs> I've been friendly with Rory for 25 years or something. Oh, no, no, no. We're going on holidays back. together now, very shortly. We're going on a Eurovision cruise. Oh, where's that? Uh, it goes from Helsinki in Finland to Tallinn in Estonia for one night. So you get on the ship at half past six on the Saturday when well, it departs at half past six <coughs> and it travels four hours to Tallinn and Estonia but you stay in the ship all night long and the next morning you can get off at eight till twelve to go around and look at Estonia but they have Eurovision next one after the other one ship. <coughs> like from like say last year's or just no, over from the years? over the years they usually have one big name maybe the person who won it Eurovision Cruise yeah because you can go in all sorts this one I did it before about four or five years ago just for the crack it's a great crack it was, it was, it it was a big name it was um, Tell me Mickey please. Um, <laughs> She won for Sweden with Euphoria. Oh, sir. I'm not going to remember the name now. Do you know, you know the song? Yeah, oh, so right. it was a brilliant song. Yeah. <coughs> and she was the big name. Mind you, she came out with dark glasses on at a kind of about half past midnight, sang one song, and it's fucked off. <laughs> and the queens weren't a bit happy, I can tell you. And they that, were screaming. She was looking to go off the ship alive. <laughs> and, with, and with that, we have the little ease aside this podcast. Now oh, yeah. Oh, does that what happens? Oh, Apple no, podcast uh, makes uh, us put the explicit side all of ours. I thought you were like, I'm one. Feel free. Um, so they're the three, but I'm sorry if I'm disappointed in one thing anybody really famous. They are all people that I have known an awful long time. Yeah. And not it, people who are famous. So it'd be, I, like, no it'd be a fun dinner party. Yeah. Yeah, people could relax in front of me. Have a laugh and not have to watch what you're saying, who you're saying it about, or why you're yeah. saying it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, and people who all have, have kind of know each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have, have your own rapport other. and your so own. So it would just be, there'd be no effort. If I'm meeting kind of people I don't know normally, if I go for dinner or something like that, I always bring them for Chinese. Okay. Any particular Chinese? Any Chinese, doesn't matter. Okay. Because, you know, if you go and you have a big group of people and you sit at the round table in Chinese, yeah. it usually has the, oh, the rotating the rotate, glass yeah. top. A Chinese meal, everybody's like, what are you having? What are you having? What are you having? You'd never do that normally. Mm -hmm. At a normal meal in a sit-down fancy restaurant. That's true. And everybody's like, can I have a bit of yours? Do you want a bit of mine? Do you want a bit yeah. of yours? And the conversation is just great. Great meal. It just, it just, the chat just starts. Mm. It's uncomplicated. Very good. So they're the three, I think. You think? No, I think if I was having dinner party next yeah. Sunday, I'd have them. Yeah. Think they're all available. Yeah, they're yeah. 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 very welcome to come along. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to, you. you'd have to get a note from your parents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 24, <laughs> There's a conversation I'd be worried about. <laughs> we can do the minutes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there would be no minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest influence on your career? In which respect? Sorry? In which respect? Um, is there anyone, say maybe in RT or even prior to RT, that maybe steered you in the right direction? Or even that you saw in your own presence? I'm sure I didn't style myself on anybody, <laughs> which is why I haven't. Which is why I'm, well, the reason I'm still there and the reason I'm not on the afternoon. <laughs> the best piece of advice I was ever given was by a guy called Joe O'Donnell, <coughs> and he was acting head of children's programs when I was like. Your age banging the door then. I've been RTC since I was 15. Yeah, wow, we were going to say yeah. 84 Olympics, you must have been yeah, what, like 17, 17 or that? Like. 
I left school in 86, I was 16. But I was hanging around there from the age of 15. So I went to school, I was from Donnybrook originally. And I went to school, the primary national school rather, right at the back gate of RT. And they used to come down when they wanted kids' voices to shout and stuff or something. And they literally come into us. <coughs> they were fantastic explorers. They went out the fucking back gate. <laughs> but um, this man, I used to hound him and hound him and hound him. I didn't know him, I never met him. And then eventually said, come up someday, you can watch Bosco being made. Loved it. I sat in the control room and watched Bosco. was blown away by this chroma key, which was the green background, where they could put images behind. Once you didn't wear green or blue, they could superimpose yeah, you. Yeah, the green screen. Anyway, yeah. it was green screen, as yeah. they call it. But chroma key is the actual technique. Yeah, yeah. And I was learning all about this, and it was fantastic. And then I used to write to him and write to him and write to him. And, write to him. and he, he gave me a little break on this show called Talk About one time, where I was a panelist, where you'd have to debate a subject and whatever it was a load of crap and then he gave me this other series which was called Drama 7 which was the European Broadcasting Union um, anyway back to the thing who are the greatest influence he said to me whatever you want to do if you want to make it in this business be yourself and come up with an idea it doesn't matter if it's been done before but do it your way and he said it doesn't matter if that's jumping through hoops that are on fire it doesn't matter he said, so long as you do it and you put your stamp on it. So in the respect of who gave me the direction, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That I literally took literally was him okay. from saying that to me. And he was being kind. He said, but I can't employ you. I don't have work. I can give you bits and pieces of the occasion. But if you really want to make it. So I did that. And if you know Don Conroy on the yeah. den, I was born a few doors from Don. Okay. And Don used to get tons and tons of... Uh, mail from so kids all over the country, blah, blah. And I would have done anything, you know, just to be hanging around all TV and in the buildings and all that. I loved it. So I used to have to answer his mail from you know, both through it and all this kind of stuff. He'd answer, but I would sort of play him. And uh, around the same time, Joe was after saying this, and I came up with this idea for a nature program where we would ramble in the woods. He was the expert, I was the idiot. <laughs> And we made a pilot, and it got accepted for six weeks. And all these years later, so thirty something years, yeah, I'm still making nature. Was name five? It was called Habitats. No, 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 no. This would have been after. Oh, that. sorry. But what I'm saying to you is, it was at that time in around. We'd like to move on from '86. Like I, I was still in school, so I didn't start. Where I didn't actually start doing the programs until I was in my twenties. So I can't remember. I'll go back thirty years. I'm fifty-one now. I suppose that's true enough in that like look we're not we're not by far we're not the first interviewers ever oh. in Irish media like in Irish media we haven't even no, made it yet true. Well, yeah. we are doing it our way like yeah we're putting our, our, our own on it, yeah. Yeah. On it. Yeah. Well, we're hoping next year especially with the new studio we don't wait until next year if I were you three I'll tell you what I would do I'd contact BBC Radio 1 and I'd send them a demo really? yep you'd send a demo and so we know what we're doing after her after the interview yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bits and pieces of music into it yeah. yeah, contemporary music that's yeah. played on BBC Radio One, not music that I would choose, <laughs> but music that would be played on Radio One. Just flash it in between and just send them a five-minute sample of the three of you talking. And you're young, you sound young, you sound different. Your voices are completely different to anything else they'd be used to listening to. And so the three, three, three good country boys, yeah. Yeah, completely and different from each other as well. And you don't have very strong contracts, no. and let them tell you no, they're not interested. Because you have to get told a hundred times. Well, I will. Greg from Leash, I'm from Calvin, and Calvin from Waterford. So, yeah, three, three nice diverse, diverse, yeah. diverse. Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't wait. I think we know what we're doing. Yeah, yeah I think we're, no, we're doing. I have my laptop with me. Yeah, so it's very, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so well, actually, you don't need studios and you don't need anything. You just need to say this is what we're doing. Yeah. Like we think we could bring something. We did interview some famous people. You know, get an interview with somebody mm -hmm. who they would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. About their careers and pitch this idea that three young lads are going to do a program where they're going to interview celebs. So pitch it to that because yeah. it's very much a celeb culture nowadays. And mix it with music and that. Okay? Yeah. I know. It's recorded properly, not with that joke. <laughs> it seems so simple. <laughs> yeah. 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 Can it be. It is that simple. But that is great. Well, people is, people don't realise it's that simple. It is. Yeah. It's going to have to put ourselves out there. The problem is that it takes a lot of balls. I was really hungry. I'm sorry, I had to. Eat. It, takes, uh, it takes a lot of balls to actually put it together and then send it to them and be rejected. Yeah. Because that's the thing. Because rejection is like think of somebody you really fancy and they're not fucking interested in you. 
it's, the, it's that's how that I, hard. That's how I feel when people say no to coming on the show. Oh, I, thought, I thought he was going to make another joke. <laughs> Never mind. No, that's the thing, like, I see, like, fans and just other people in the media, like, you have to send out your demo tape. You have to yep. send out what you're doing, what yep. you're selling. And rejection is just part and part. It's not going to come to you. You have to part part it, really. yep. We did a play to RT for that thing. Yeah, we. I um, I got a notion one day to um, just email the independent radio production yes. board or something like that. Um, they said they couldn't help us, but they had passed it on to Radio HR in RT. I haven't heard back from them since, but um, yeah, it was just something on the the moment. Let's see if. Well, you need your Dan Healy's ahead of tour, man. He's the guy you need to talk. Go straight to the horse. But I, I'm telling you, I, I wouldn't be. I would not if I was starting again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't waste any time. Straight straight I was offered a full-time job in the BBC and I never took it. But my mistake all those years ago. I did not let any of those things get in my way of being rejected. I used to ring, I said I used to ring that guy in Joe, Joe O'Donnell. I'd never met him, that eventually he brought me up to meet him. I used to ring this guy in the BBC National History Unit, a fellow called Paul Appleby. I saw his name at the end of a television credit one time on a credits. I phoned him for about two years and eventually said, well, if you're ever over in Bristol, I'll meet you. I got on a plane the next day and I rang him from the fucking back door. He said, where are you? I said, I'm at the back gate. <laughs> where? I said, I'm British. This is true as God. True, you couldn't make it up. And he said, well, I'm busy now. But he said, will you be here in the afternoon? I can see you for a few minutes. I said, sure, yeah. And when he came down, I remember distinctly, I was at the back of security gate. They had one of these things that went up and down. And I was standing there. And I saw him walking across. And the cafe was in there. And as he walked over to me, he said, are you dark? He said, I've only got 15 minutes. And he was really pissed off. <laughs> I said, that's fine. We went in, and an hour and a half later, I was walking out the gate, the gate that I'd come in, and he was shouted out to me, you've got yourself a pilot. And they made a pilot with me called Looney Rock, which was those rambles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like I had done on radio. I said, this would work on telly. Didn't get accepted, but then that evolved into a program called BBC Nature Detectives, which was on BBC One, and then I was brought over as one of the reporters for three seasons. And then from that they had offered me a full-time job on radio and TV. Mm -hmm. Well, on a contract first for nine months. But I was so unsure of myself, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. that, and because I was trying to work with RT, and somebody in RT had screwed me over, saying, if you do that, you'll never work again, sort of here. That's the actually said. So I, I wouldn't, don't, if you have an idea and you think it's good. Go with it. Go with it. Have you got the yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't buy you playing a small pond and you can be in the big one. Is that and something they, that you regret? Maybe not taking that job with, with BBC all those years ago? Well, you don't know what way things are going to go. I mean, I ended up could end, have, getting a streak and yeah. you know, I'd have been the highest profiles in the country. Yeah. You know, so I can't yeah, yeah. regret it in that sense. I mean, I may never have gotten to that level in Britain. So have you ever maybe wondered what, what if? Yeah. I mean, what can I do about I mean, you say what if, but like, it's like you're still on TV and radio now. Like, I'm not I mean, on television very much, very rarely. Well, well, once a year now, just do like a, it's, it's, a special it's, it's, not, it's not like you're coming towards the end, there's still plenty of time for you to cross the pond. <laughs> I'm 100 kilos. <laughs> how, how, how long was Bruce Forsyth? Well, I can't have oh, laser surgery. Why? Because. My prescription is long-sighted and it's too strong. It's plus seven, I think, yeah. and I have two stigma yeah. astigmatism. I'm, only, yeah. I'm, like I'm only short of bleeding from the eyes. I have two astigmatisms and one in each eye. Well, my problem is I can't afford laser, so it's never going to be an issue for me. Yeah. Yeah. Glasses yeah. suit you. I don't know. They they I don't do wear them that often. They suit you. You get away with them. These are my Harry Potter ones because um, we went tortoise there. Shell. I don't think Harry Potter was wearing tortoise shell glasses. Um, but the roundness. See, I lost my other ones uh, a couple of weeks ago and Specsavers don't do them anymore. Oh, I really okay. like them. Well, do what I did. Oh. I bought these online. I, and then I immediately, couldn't. the next day, cancelled my credit card because I'd never bought anything online before. <laughs> well, that, that was only legal this year. No way. I'm calling BS on That's that That's true. No, absolute truth. I hadn't, all I had ever done online was book uh, flights. I'd never bought anything. Why? I don't do anything Support the local online. economy or I don't, just I don't do anything online. I don't have any direct debits for anything. I don't do social media. Is that some actually touching on social media? It's a, it's a question that we ask a lot of our guests. Yeah, I don't do it at all. Um, are you glad that you yeah. grew up in an era where it wasn't forced upon you? Um, no, because all, all my colleagues seem to do it, whatever's wrong with them. <laughs> I do think well, kind of you know like, if you're an even, adult even Joe Duffy goes around with two iPads yeah. and Twitter all the time I don't get it like in this industry, I really don't get it do you feel that you have to be communicating with people all the fucking time constant yeah. I mean it, I love what I do don't get me wrong I've never wanted to work in anything else only in broadcast when I was a kid I thought if I got a job as in the post room at RT just delivering the post 
I would be happy for the rest of my life. It's only when you get more you realise you wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. But that was my goal to work in RT and nothing else. The idea of having to be in people's face, I never wanted to be famous, ever. It's never yeah. something that, even when you started doing Echo Island, you started doing, never Hated crossed it. your mind that you were going to I be. Never, and everybody will say, I never go to the opening the of anything. The sweetheart of the nation on winning streak. Though. My whole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cult. There's the, a cult. The, the Brendan, um, uh, Brendan, Brendan, not Brendan O'Carroll, Brendan presents... Uh, Oh, O'Connell or Bre Connor. Brendan O'Connor, yeah. said in the independent one. It was the time Mary McAleese was running for the presidency, that I'd be a perfect candidate because I do nothing of any importance, only wave at our ones and kiss them on the cheek. You could always contest Michael Dean for a second. I thought about it, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I might live up there in the big house on my own. It's a nice big house. Very boring. Yeah. No, no, I've been in it a few times. But I've no interest in any celebrity thing at all. So social media, I just don't get why people... I can kind of see why you guys might. Yeah. Well, might feel pressurised into it. I can see why, how the media has changed, and why nowadays you have to do it for yeah. your work. Mm -hmm. But why you can't leave it at home when you've gone home mm -hmm. is the thing I don't for quite us get. Now it's you don't have to be it's necessary. Yeah, yeah. So I know it's it is, a necessary yeah. tool for promotion because yeah. how else would we grow outside the DC community? Bar word of mouth and like I mean, how, yeah, I mean, even DC really listens to our live shows during the semester. We're starting to get a few people listening now because we promote it on Facebook yeah. and stuff like that. We got to 400 likes there, and it's basically just been, you know, we upload an episode and we do promotion on Facebook. So we can go to a water. But then you've got to think about the people you interview as well. I mean, I would not be the type of person that would sue the audience that would be listening to you. You want to go for somebody a little bit funkier and younger. Yeah. Oh. But. Like the equivalent of me in the UK would be very different on Radio 1. That's the interesting thing about Ireland. Mm. Well, in yeah, Britain, uh, like David Attenborough, who's in his 90s, yeah. anybody of any age would be kind of curious to listen to. He would fit in a slot into any radio station, but here in Ireland, they wouldn't slot you in like that. It's interesting. And, and why is it? Is, be, is it just oh, because, because it's such a closed, are, small community? I or? think the narrow-mindedness of the people who run the organisation. Yeah, and I suppose... We're, we're quite limited in the number of outlets that there is as well, you know, they're all... Not really. Really? I don't think so many local radio stations or independent radio stations are there. The oh, we, we actually do. There's 30 or something, are there? Yeah. There's 42 licences yeah. or something yeah, like there's that. There's quite a lot. You know, there's only 36 counties and the islands. You know, so that's more than one per county. You think about it. Well, actually, there's only one for Leash Offley and Westmead. Is that Midlands? Yeah. There's two down in Walford, but one of them serves the whole South East Lafayette, and then and you have WLR at them. Yeah, WLR and KCLR are... Yeah. And then four has a few as far as I know. And by the way, I'm deadly serious about the Radio 1 thing. I am deadly serious well, about it. Believe because we'll you pick it on board, anyway. Are you ask yourself, how many three guys from Ireland are going to send that off tomorrow? No. So um, nothing else, if that lands on the right desk, they're going to say, who are these guys? We'll have a distinctive like voice. From yeah. where? Yeah. From where? Right, what are they going to do? They're going to interview celebs on Radio 1 and mix it with music. What's the show called? I wouldn't call it In Conversation. That's the first thing I wouldn't call it. <laughs> yeah. I think that was the name I came up generic. I might have used 30, 40 years ago. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a problem that we are going to encounter at some point is the name, but we can always... What's your, in it, your column? What are you? Greg. Greg? 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 Mm -hmm. CJ... Z Gavin? Yeah. CJ G. Then you're Gavin, Greg. Oh, you're yeah. Greg. Greg. So C C G G. C G G. I would I would do something stupid with yeah. the names yeah. of your name. Like I'm like, call yourself Abba. <laughs> <laughs> Abba, brackets but better. Might already be taken. Uh, might Copyright infringement. <laughs> right, anyway, come on, next question. So your forty five minutes is nearly up. Yeah, I know. Um so we're gonna dive right into how did you advance to go to the Olympics in eighty four or so? When does that? Even, how does that even come about? Like, yeah, like the runner job. Who did you play that that time? It wasn't Joe O'Donnell. I was uh, hanging around the place, um, and I went to a man called Tim O'Connor, who's head of sport. I didn't go to Los Angeles. I was working here in RTE. Oh, I was working. It was my first paid job, though. Oh, right. In RTE. What? So you were just a runner in the studio? I was a runner in the studios because the time difference meant that we were on air live from 10 a.m. 10 p.m. Sorry, to I think 8 a.m. or 6 a.m. in the morning. And I was just fetching the teas and coffees, but I remember going into the head of sport at the time, a fella called Tim O'Connor, and I'd been hanging around the place. Somebody must have introduced me to him. And he said, well, we're looking for runners on, on the Los Angeles Olympics. He said, you've got a head, you've got a leg. Can you speak? I said, yes. He said, grand. Contact so-and-so. <laughs> That's what happened. I didn't know I don't think it's not easy anymore, yeah. is no, it? No, it's not. They've changed <laughs> completely the way those things are done. And can I tell you, I earned a small fortune when I was like 16 or 17, because 
I was still in school, but every weekend I was working on RTA as a runner on either sports programs or some other programs. And sometimes during the week, I mean, they used to have the Benson and Hedges snooker tournament, which was held uh, in RTE. Mm -hmm. Then it moved out to Goffs, I think, but it was in RTE. And I'm telling this girl, it's like I'm working. And I said, okay, go ahead. Because I remember we had this career guidance teacher and they were, you know, everybody went in to talk about what you want to do. And I told him what I wanted to do. He said, I really can't tell you. He said, he said, but you're already doing all this stuff. He said, you'll just keep going. You'll make it. Maybe you'll get there eventually. Yeah, yeah but he, like I knew, I never doubted what I wanted to do from like that. I always knew what I wanted to do. How was the, the, during the running anyway? It was fantastic. I loved it. So was, I, mean, was I there just wanted to be like, around the place. You'd be like, if you've seen him, you'd be like, no, I'm not getting into anything. Or you pulled the other way. No, that's all. No one. No. So well, I suppose there was probably no like baristas back then. So like, then like what? There was probably no baristas, so you didn't have to worry about someone asking no, you for a low fat a double wife one take away shot. instant coffee and shit. I don't know. It was you'd need no, a voice recorder you, taking a coffee order. I mean, order literally, now. you just took the orders down and what people wanted, a piece of paper, and you went over to the canteen and you got it and you brought it back and you gave it to them. Like uh, the people, the, you had people working on sound and TV taking the feeds, and then you had the presenters on the floor who were linking. And then you had people who worked in what was called the International Sound taking in all the fees. Like, that's all you were doing. But, but everybody was lovely to me. Because obviously I bring them the food. I suppose uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't bite the hand that feeds you, yeah. of course. But no, but I was only a kid as well. Like, I mean, I was only young. Like, everybody was, great. Was, really, everybody was really nice to me. Like, really nice to me. You know, because, like, I was 16. I suppose. Yeah. And people just they were kind. And I got loads of work because I was bloody good. Because when I was a kid, like, I used to run the old folks club in Donington. When I was 13, I used to, there was to be an old folks bingo night, and I used to run, you know. And you, I just so that's got where it all started. To, well, I just got that's used where the to being around from the old ladies, also. probably. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Well, I, I work in a hotel at the weekends, and um, I too, the old ladies have a fondness for me. Yeah, yeah. you just get a thing out. I don't know. You see, my hair, this isn't my natural hair. I, we did a charity race, Gab and I did a charity race across Europe um, oh, back really? in May, and I ran. No. Well, that's the first thing everyone yeah. asked. Did you run or did you cycle? No, uh, we begged our way over. Yeah. And we did beg or steal. So it's kind of like the, the Trinity jailbreak, if you're familiar yeah, with that. Yeah, I think we covered that. We did that with somebody a few years ago on the radio. What was Gavin Wreck? Have you ever heard of called Gav? no. Gavin Wreck? Wreck is a, Darren Wreck. Yeah. Oh. He did something like that with a girl, a friend of his, and they went around and they were literally scabbing lifts or yeah. whatever. That's what we do. Yeah, we went to London, Amsterdam, then Barcelona. And where did you stay? Uh, we went were to London, instead of my relatives, went to Amsterdam, Almost. slept on park bench for an hour. Uh, for Bar an hour, yeah. like at two in the afternoon. Barcelona, we uh, slept in a hostel. It's a, the long <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. No. Did you do it properly? Did you actually pay any money or something? No. Second. So we came second. Yeah. Um, yeah. Out of two yeah. that competed. Yeah, only two. Only two teams actually yeah, finished it because the word, Tom. it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you didn't have to like put us down. Oh, like it's that. been thirty-eight minutes and he's already calling me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it was a great experience. Uh, it was very tough. Not what? How much you say? Remember that. Yeah, that's what you say. Seriously, I know. You remember? Oh. That. You, you'll turn out to be the star. Yeah. Go, on. <laughs> go on. Go on. Go on. Anyways, um, so this is. Oh yeah, this is my, I'm not actually blonde, and um, I'm hoping this is going to be out of it soon. Yeah. It's been a couple of months now. I, yeah. yeah. I'm, brought, I'm what what used to it now. I'm, I'm actually like dark brown. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. You can see his roots there. Well, there. I'm not naturally grey. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was supposed to be grey, but uh, the hairdresser didn't do a very good job. Yeah, he, they were, they were going to, as a gag, they were going to play up the whole Greg is a mature student, he's old kind of thing. He went for grey, came it's out. It's hard to look 25. I know. I know. You, you see me when I'm clean shaven. <laughs> to be honest with you, when I come up here, I kind of thought that's not them. Those guys look like their brothers. <laughs> and here we are. Seriously, I did yeah. think that when I walked up first. Instead of coming uh, it's a common so thing. We, 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 we put another euro into the jar of the amount of times people think that you Maybe I can get that laser eye surgery yeah, though. Yeah. Um, don't have an issue here. Go on in <laughs> so out of you've obviously done a vast array of shows. We'd be here all day yeah. trying to listen. But what was your favourite? Well, actually, we'll we'll narrow it down a bit. What was your favourite radio and what was your favourite TV? I loved doing the afternoon show at times, and I hated it at other times. Why? What were the pros? What were the cons? Pros were like we got to do really interesting stuff. We got to travel to very interesting places. Like we were out of the Eurovision five for five years. I loved that. It was great crack. And then um, we got to go to South Africa, and we met interesting people on the radio all the time. And the cons were there were too many people working on big teams. I never liked that. Okay. I never really got used to working with the big teams. Okay. 
and then you just reach a point where you just kind of think, which is what happened. I just thought, I just don't know whether I want to do this anymore. Okay. I suppose you reached so that plateau. That, kind of. well, no, that was a con in the sense that I conned myself thinking I didn't want to do it anymore. Okay. And then when you step out of it, you stepped out of it. Mm-hmm. So that was that. And so I loved doing that. And then in terms of TV, I loved doing Winnie Street, but I couldn't bear the rehearsals. I couldn't bear the rehearsals. What, what are you rehearsing? I hate it. You're rehearsing the whole games with the people. Yeah. yeah. But we do it twice. We need to do it once. You do a technical rehearsal, then you rehearse with the people, then you do the show. And by the time it came to doing the show, I was totally exhausted in my mind. I was just exhausted in my mind. I can imagine. It wasn't a not hard work. People have to go and they have to do really hard shots. People look at us and but it was mind-numbingly boring for me <laughs> until I did the show. And sometimes yeah. when I got to the show, I was so bored that I had lost interest in it. The best times were when we were, everything was in a hurry and we didn't meet the people. But that and it was very, very like impromptu kind of thing. Yeah. Well, the rehearsal with people was always funny. Really? Well, because there was like a lot of elderly people. Yeah, and, and they're meeting, remember, they're meeting Daniel O'Donnell. <laughs> Me. <laughs> and they were beside themselves with yeah. excitement. I, am, I, am, I couldn't even make this. Oh no, I understand, yeah. There, there was a, it was an when extraordinary When I told my thing. mum, my mum was like, she asked me if I get something signed for her. No. Like, but it, it, was, it was kind of an extraordinary reaction that some of the people is would have. Is it strange for you? Because like, chatting to you now, you seem like a very down to earth. I am, like, because I never wanted to get down to someone. Yeah, interesting. exactly. So like, is, 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 do you still find it strange? I mean, you might be used to it now when... Um, when people have that kind of awestruck look on oh, their face and they see I know they don't. And it, it, it was, look, that was a very different thing. People were buying scratch cards and they were appearing. There was a whole heap of things going down. First of all, they were in a television studio. They knew they were walking out the door with 10 grand. 10 grand was life-changing money for a lot of people. Yeah. When I started, it was 10,000 pounds yeah. first. And then people were often walking out with a million euro. Right. How many times actually? Did yeah, quite a few times when I did it. Oh, really? People won half a million. And then we did one show one night, which was a million pounds. And did someone win? Yeah, no, it was guaranteed million. Yeah. So we did it in the Helix, and so we had a full audience, and there were 40, 42 players. Yeah. yeah, so we had 42 players, and it was narrowed down to five, five or six, and then down to three, and then they had to crack the combination. Safe number. And I remember the time thinking when the woman won it, because we had this glass safe with the money in, and the safe just opened, the door just opened, the thing turned around automatically, and the door opened up. So you could see all the money inside. And I remember thinking, God, she doesn't look very excited. And it was only when I looked back at her and said, she fucking had her heart. <laughs> so you had that kind of odd thing going down where they were in this strange environment. I mean, when I was giving away to RT, of course, it wasn't the people, it was the fact that it was actually in RT. It was so big. We still get that whenever yeah. we have to wait for an RT. It was so like, big, you know, but it's not the same anymore. Same. Yeah, we still like it'll probably wear off at some point. But when we go to RT and you and you, you see Tobri walk past you, you're like, well, that's the way I was when I was a kid. Cause I used to see Gay Byrne walking down through Donnybrook yeah. when I lived in Donnybrook, and I always wanted to do the late late. Actually, there's quite a few of you that came from that area. Then yeah. like Dave Fanning was Fanning as well. Yeah. Yeah. He's from Budapest or something. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. right next door. Um, I suppose we're going to talk about the present a bit. So the president. Uh, President, we'll move on to your presidential campaign after. <laughs> yeah. or, well, I suppose we're going to talk about what advice you'd give to three up-and-coming people. And I gave it to you. So we've got that. We've that. got our, our checklist here. Juxtapose that around. So one last one I didn't actually get to do on our um, get to know you quiz was, and you've also kind of answered it. Uh, if you were to take a tipple, now I said you, I know you said you, you don't drink no. occasionally. Very rarely. Then. Um, what would it be? A glass of wine. Maybe a glass of wine or a beer sometimes, but I'm no, I've no interest in alcohol, so no. I'm on zero. Was that a personal disease? Like I just got fed up getting a headache. Just got absolutely I fed up getting a headache. I've said that many times. I don't need you're it. close to that at this station yeah. now, Greg. Yeah. He's, a, he's an awful <laughs> hangover. I've got an awful hangover. No, I mean, some people can just take it, and I couldn't. I couldn't bear it any longer. So and, and I wouldn't have to drink much even to have it. So. And you just said... Don't need it to have a good time. I don't need it. No. Yeah. I mean, I'm quite, I'm quite capable of going into a pub. And like I was watching the match last night with friends of mine down in uh, some pub down in uh, the exercise bar. I think it was down in the IFSC. But like, everybody was drinking. I wasn't. I didn't need anything. I stayed like, at the end. I kept staying. <laughs> in Irish culture, you know, like there's obviously quite a, a stigma. And like, you know, if someone says you have a pint, and they say, no, I don't drink. You know, you you obviously get that second glance. Like, mm. uh, was it ever something that? No, you see, but I was used to somebody saying, have you got a girlfriend? I said, no, and I got that second glance. So I'm, I'm able to withstand the pressure of somebody saying, you better have a drink, you better have a bleeding girlfriend. No thanks. So Derek, just... So I don't have those issues, to be perfectly honest with you. Do you have a private moment, or a moment that's really like the pinnacle of your life? 
I'm really glad I did this. I'm really proud of this. Or There's a couple of things that jump in my mind. The first thing that jumps in my mind is we built a garden for a disadvantaged school in Canberra. And I remember thinking, well, if I did nothing else in the radio, I did that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like this is a school that's one of those, I think they call them DESH schools, where, so they're disadvantaged. And, uh, the teacher contacted me out of the blue one day. I didn't know them. Man, I don't live in Canberra. I'm not from Canberra. And I don't want to be in Canberra. I live in Canberra. But anyway, this teacher, it's Christ the King's Boys and Girls National School. So we there's a, a linear kind of space around the entire uh, building, which is in a kind of square pattern and we built a garden which consisted of a kind of a vegetable patch and we put in these ra railway sleepers as kind of an outdoor teaching space and since then I've been up a few times and you go around that they've kind of extended and extended and extended right around the perimeter of the garden um, if you go if you go by that huh? I don't know if if you if you go up you know that big church where Bohemian Football Club is the big church in the middle of the road yeah, yeah. and the road goes like that yeah. you go up that that swords camera right, but you yeah. keep going up and up and up and up and then there's a garage on the left hand side yeah, yeah. and you turn right there and you go in there and around the school oh, there, is in there. Yeah, and there's a, there's a big church in front of it so you'll see it there's a little plaque there and Bertie Hurd came and opened it yeah that's um, so that was one thing and then we did one for the daycare center in Donnybrook where they look after old people and we yeah. built a fabulous garden there and part of it was sensory. So they're the two things that jump in my mind in terms of um, what about you? Yeah. Well, we've won lots of awards. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have, though. Like international awards. No, no, no. For the radio program. Like the first one was 2000, we won the Free Europa, which was one of the biggest radio awards in Europe uh, for installing cameras and a jackdaw's nest. And it hadn't really been done before. People weren't even doing that. They were doing bigger stuff. They weren't doing small stuff like that. And then we won, a couple of years ago, we won the Rose Door in Europe for the Dawn Course, European Dawn Course. Right. So those kind of things would all mix in together. And Derek, so looking ahead, do you, are you goal oriented? Would you say, I want to do this in the future, or can I just go with the flow, enjoying what you're doing at the moment? No, well, we, last year we developed a new program for the EBU, which was Nature Live, which was live broadcast from the Liffey here. Right. We did it the Sunday before the Eurovision because it was all kind of tied into this big EBU thing and we broadcast live nature to six countries in Europe Norway, Slovenia, Romania, uh, the Netherlands and uh, it's going to met. but anyway so we did that and we're, we've, to, we've been told to take that and develop it at the stage further and I know that the producer in Cork wants to do a kind of a Top Gear nature style programme but whether we get it accepted or not yeah. on scale and, but that's what you're working on and that's for Europe it's not just for Ireland Talk your nature stuff. That's a great yeah. way to describe it. Yeah. Definitely watch that. Well, no, it is a very good idea. I mean, it's a very, very good idea. It just depends on how you can kind of make it look. It's it, trying to do is to make a nature program that is kind of for everybody, everybody, all ages, but without taking away from the kind of core audience of people that might be interested in nature. Yeah, like you want to like. So they're kind of interesting stories. And the niche of people who are into that, and then also just a broader demographic. Yeah, that's what we're working on, whether yeah. it gets accepted that's or not. That's the goal, anyway. It's yeah. like a fellow, you meet an author and say, are you doing anything moments if I'm writing a book? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not working either. <laughs> but I am actually working. That's what I'm working on. It's my job. So um, all the people you've interviewed and you've had the pleasure of meeting, is there anyone that stands out? I like Mary McAleese. Okay. I thought Mary Magalese was fantastic. I thought she was um, very welcoming, certainly to our program. Uh, when she went into office there, we were contacted and asked, well, she used to do these um, interviews once a year, and I was invited up to the park to interview her, and it was a fantastic honour. It was a terrific honour, and a really nice person, and head screwed on, and uh, the, the only agenda she had, I felt, was the right agenda for people both north and south at the time she her kind of campaign was building bridges you know between the north and south but she was very much kind of uh, the Oris was for everybody and the presidency was about everybody and not about one person individual and she's a super person I mean she was she worked in RT herself I never knew her then but I think I think her, I mean I met, I met Desmond Tutu and I've met some really interesting people and the thing is I, my memory is terrible so don't remember everybody we've interviewed over the years but I think I think in, in terms of uh, political figures, or whatever. I think her. I think, and I've bumped into her subsequently sure a few times. To interview the president and certainly be yeah. top of our list. No, really, no, really. 
really is she's super. I sent an email to Michael B. Or some of Jerome's, whatever email it was. We didn't hear back. So. Send another one. Yeah, I know. Especially coming up to his camp. If he goes yeah, to the second time, I tend to. If, uh, well, he has announced that he wants to be yeah. president. Yeah, yeah. I, us- I usually, if I don't get a response, I'll wait a couple weeks and then I send another one. He just keeps going until something gets back. Poking the bear, poking the bear, something gets back. No, do, but yeah. I mean, do send it. Yeah, why not? And following on from that, is there an interview that stands out for all the wrong reasons? Maybe didn't go to plan. <laughs> for those wondering, they're just pointing, <laughs> pointing <laughs> at the <laughs> Zoom. Yes. I don't particularly know. No. Oh, no, but, but if you ask me who I hate to interview, and it was, hate, hate is a strong word, it's the, it's the wrong word, who I dislike intensely ever interviewing on radio, and we did them very rarely because of it. It's comedians, they're not funny. <laughs> they're not funny. Show me six people who tell you they're funny when they're on their own. They're not funny. They're only funny when they're an audience. And they're usually yeah. self-obsessed interviews. Like just no, no interest in comedians at all. None. Zero. Zip. And one of the happiest working weeks of my life was working on Mrs. Brown's Boys. I had, I had a oh, yeah, cameo you made a role cameo on it, yeah. in episode one of series three. And that was one of the happiest working weeks of my life for a couple of reasons, but primarily because of the professionalism of the BBC and Brendan O'Carroll's outfit. I mean, absolutely. I remember I was sitting at home one Friday night watching The Late Late a little bit and I thought, what the fuck am I doing here watching The Late Late? I'm only 48 or whatever age I was, 47. I shouldn't be stuck in on a Friday night, right? Watching the telly. Am I mad? And the phone rang. No, it was a text message. It was a text message. And it said, would you like to be a Mr. Brown's voice? And I said, who's this? <laughs> Obviously enough, as you would like. Brendan O'Carroll. We're filming the new series. I have a part. I'd like you to be in it. Call me. Wow, so casual. I called him and I said, yeah. I said, I've got a part for a hypnotist. His name is Simon Levine. Can you do it? I said, yes, but I have to ask my boss. So I rang or to check my boss, whatever. And they said, yeah, go ahead, do it. But I went over, I remember, I remember, went over on the Monday. Started work at 10 o'clock. Taxi collected, you brought you out. You rehearsed. You were introduced to the people, uh, the entire crew. You rehearsed, rehearsed twice the program that day. You rehearsed the next morning and then the entire crew came out because the rehearsals were done in a building off from Glasgow where the studios are, where there's a film in Glasgow. And the entire production crew came out to watch the rehearsal. I've never seen that before. Never. In RT, when the programs are rehearsed, they're rehearsed on, in the studio mm-hmm. with the crew there. Yeah. And you might rehearse it once, twice, and then you do the program on the same day. So this was the uh, you, you full rehearsal on the Monday just with the cast. The next day, the crew watching. So they're following scene, scene, scene. So the lighting, the sound man, everybody knows each scene. And the next day, on Wednesday, you went into the studio where you rehearsed it twice in the studio. And then on the Thursday, you went into the studio and you recorded one program in the afternoon and one program that evening, and they cut the best of both to give one program. It was the most professional. And that's for every, they, they do every that. Every single, on. yeah. Wow. Every Mr. Brown's Boys episode. Which is why it's the number one yeah, most yeah. watch. Not just the, because people seem to get it and think mm-hmm. it's funny and like it and like the way he writes it and all that kind of stuff. And it's pretty basic humour, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful yeah. way. And that's what people. But actually, it's very, very well rehearsed. It's very, very well produced and put together. You know, it isn't thrown together. The time and the money is spent on it, and it sells all over the world. Has acting anything as that ever tempted I can you? Act, no. I mean, as you could clearly see, anybody who saw it. <laughs> Has it ever, well, has Brendan it ever words, I said, how do you want me to do this? He said, look around you, look at the pub you're in, you're a shit hypnotist. <laughs> <laughs> and I was. It's never been like, once you... Shit hypnotist. Once, like, like, once certain people get like... Um, a level of achievement in one area of the media they tend to look to other areas and go into other things yeah lose the role of themselves yeah. ideas yeah. above their station no it hasn't I just stick to what you're good at I don't even know if I'm doing what I'm good at <laughs> well I think you must be doing something yeah. Yeah. No, seriously I mean this I don't know I mean how do we know what we're doing what we're good at I'm sure the public will no, let you know no no, 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 no. well no my ratings on winning streak were the highest ever on winning streak it very often be the late late the radio show ratings when I took over the program, it had 106,000 listeners and brought it to 232,000 at speak. I mean, the present incumbent hasn't done that yet. So the ratings by far were the best. Does it matter? How do you know you're doing 
what As you're good at. Do you, do you understand that? Yeah. It's subjective, I suppose. Yeah. Well, it's, I don't even know if it's subjective because I don't know if I'm yeah. doing what I'm good at. Well, I know that when I said there I know. All these years, so well, years. the one person I admired for years and years and years was Twink. You've heard of Twink? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because longevity. She's longevity. Around. And I remember, yeah. have you ever saw a documentary called Tantrums and Tiaras? Yeah. With yeah. David yeah. Furnish and uh, Elton John. I, yeah. And at one point, I think they're walking down to play tennis or something like that. And David Furnish says, "Do you ever worry that the records will stop selling?" He said, "That's just not going to happen because he's been around so long that his audience is a whole career, it's a whole." back catalogue of music but a whole back catalogue of himself that people have invested into and it just won't end but I don't know in, in broadcasting it's kind of slightly different to be honest with you it's, and you're at the behest really of your bosses that's why I played it smart and I took the staff job <laughs> Anyone's goal, well, our goal is obviously to get a full time position, but to get one in RTE is. Well, they don't exist anymore, to be very honest with you. I came through public competition ultimately as a producer, not as a presenter. So, unemployed as, I'm not employed as a presenter, I'm employed as, I'm actually the executive producer of Nature Program. Yeah. That's, That's what you moved into in like 2015 yeah. or that. Was but it? I always made Nature Programs. I worked on the Natural History Unit in Bristol. I won six or seven international awards for making nature for them. That is more, awards, but three or four of them written. Most Irish media personalities are usually just representing and it's, it's, it's all kind of third party. Yeah. Dave Fanning was saying that, wasn't he? Yeah, sure. He, like, a lot of them, like Dave Fanning and Ryan they're all represented by the same people. No uh, Kelly. Yeah, no Kelly management, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, there is really no kind of guaranteed <laughs> jobs in media. Yeah, but I like a challenge. Yeah. No, but, you, you, but, but you could make, you, if you go in a different way, route, yeah. like if you go in not as... Sorry, there is no full-time jobs for talent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because they can't... If you ha want to refresh talent, how can you have them staff? Now, as that happens, if you look at RT's newsroom, a lot of the frontline presenters are staff. Because they're newscasters, and that seems to be different. It doesn't seem to, to be like if you're a talent outside yeah, of that area. Yeah. So if you go in as a producer or a researcher or whatever production assistant, it doesn't time, matter. Yeah. And you get the full time job, then you hold that. And then if you go into working, you see, I was, I was working freelance for years. And then when I was presenting Echo Island children's programs, whatever, I was presenting on a contract. Okay. But then I applied for the producer job, didn't get it for the first time, came up again about a year later, I applied, and then I got it the second time. And then I was only put on a training course, so I left my presentation to do it. And I remember the amount of time saying, I said, no, that's what I want to do. So then, ultimately, after several years, then I was there so long, I got continuous employment. Mm -hmm. But would I, I don't even know if I passed the exam to get the producer job today, to be honest. Because it, it was done like it, it was an, an application where you interviewed, there was no exam. Now they have an exam. And if you go in a certain room, and some people are good under that pressure. I'm good under a different type of pressure. But if I just sit down there and think of something and, and start answering questions, I'd be thinking, I'd walk out of the room and, and I'd have it all in the top of my head. Because I mean, I devour current affairs and politics and news. But if you ask me who the minister or something is, I'd have to fucking think about it. And then it would come back to me. So I don't like those kind of exam things. I've never been an exam panel. Continuous assessment is the way forward. Possibly. And finally, I suppose um, the Late Late Show is often considered, I suppose, the pinnacle of Irish. Yeah. You know, for various reasons. I suppose the job is the most coveted in the industry. I wonder is it anymore? I mean, I'd still like to do it, but I wanted to do it from like when I was about 11, because I used to watch it. And I used to watch the toy show thinking, God, wouldn't that be fantastic? And honestly, when I was 11, I used to, that's what I, that was my dream. And I would still like to do it. But I wouldn't do it the way they do it now. The format of it as such. Not no, I, I, I wouldn't have any bad news on it at all. Okay. I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't have anything negative on. Um, I'd have the comedians on to perform. I don't even give a shit who they're going out with, where they were last night, where they hope to go in the future. I don't care. Just get on, do your acting, get off. <laughs> right? Seriously. And as for that kind of cowtown to kind of celebs and all that kind of stuff, I don't like it. I've never liked it. So I've ne you, I don't you like celebs. You won't take the Tuberty approach, or I suppose. The no, it's not the Tuberty approach. But not, even like it's, the, it's, the Pat Kenny kind of approach to it. No, we're, we're all different. And Pat is, is, I still believe, the best broadcaster in the country. Pat okay. Kenny. 
I really do think that. I think he's absolutely, in terms of his knowledge of current affairs, social issues, his ability to be able to take a subject matter, disseminate it in his brain, and ask pertinent questions to make that relevant to people who are listening on the radio, is an extraordinary capacity. He's a very intelligent man, a very capable individual. I don't know whether he'd say himself that light entertainment was a strong point. I would argue that light entertainment is my strong point, if I have one. So when you asked me earlier, am I doing what I'm good at? I don't know, because I'm making nature programs. I'm not doing light entertainment. Yeah, yeah. I believe that that's what I should be doing full time. But that is not my call. That's my boss's call. If you said to me, what would you like to do tomorrow? I think I'd like to take charge of the Eurovision Sound Contest. And do something with it. Do something with it from a national final point of view. And then do something uh, with it. With, uh, whether we'll ever win it again or not. I don't know because of the way the competition is. Sure, sure, sure. But, like, I saw two, two girls singing at it. I was judging a competition in Van Brigham recently. I think they were called Gallers, just two, two women, and one of them was playing that. What's you call that box you sit on? What's the thing called? Oh, called co Cajon. What's it called? A Cajon. Possibly, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. And the sister was singing. And I'm telling you, like, the cream mm. rises to the top. Mm. I saw lots of acts. You can't make two, three hundred people scream for you. But don't know you if you're not good. And they walked it. They were and I saw them I put them in the Yeah. I would absolutely put them in what have we got to lose? Yeah. What I remember about your vision is what happened in Ireland is like just we were doing so well and then it was nothing to do with Ireland. Uh, I know it was the voting it's it's the voting structure. structure. They, they yeah. changed yeah. they changed the exactly. voting structure. Now they changed it back again. So you have a fifty fifty vote. You've got a public vote and then you've got a jury vote. And usually the juries you know, that's the interesting thing about it is they tend to all pick the same songs yeah. so they're kind of usually music heads or people who have an interest in music and then the public you don't know what they're going to do yeah. but it, it has changed but I, I, I would I, I, that's that, tomorrow if they said to me what do you want to work on next year that's it I'd say that that ain't going to happen because very rarely do you get the jobs you want yeah and then when you do you say be careful what you wish yeah. that's what we say about interviews you know um, obviously there's people that I have a list well, I hope I wasn't list. too bad for you now but you, uh, you're taking the box and you learn something from it well, we've, we've oh, lots yeah. to take oh, from yeah. it. Yeah, lots to do once this interview. Yes, we do. <laughs> a lot of editing to do. Um, well, no, yeah, I think you should do that. Yeah. No, we definitely will. Oh. We definitely will. And I think we even, we probably have the majority of the showreel from, yeah, from the first half really of last year, last year from last year. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got a good um, mechanic going because um, I'm not a solo broadcaster either. And when I went to get the afternoon show, I said, I needed somebody with me. Right. Because presenting on your own is quite dull if you're not an interesting yeah. person. And if you haven't got the ability to sit and listen to people. Now, as I'm being interviewed, if I agree to do an interview, I talk. Mm -hmm. But if I was interviewing you, I could listen to you without yes. saying anything. And be very careful what I ask you. So you're going to learn the biggest lessons from today. But I wanted Brenda to come and work on the show because we needed a reporter. And I said, everybody will know who Brenda don't know who is. She worked with Jerry Ryan for years. So when she goes into a room, everybody knows her. And she won't be shy or retiring or anything else like that. But the fact that you've got the three of you, you already have your audience. And the audience is each other. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it makes it easier for you to interview somebody, makes it interview, into easier for you to throw in a question, and easier for you to throw in a question. So you don't have to be talking all the time. So I think the dynamic could be very good if you just work on it as, as well, but I do think so. Yeah. Well, that, that Going on your own is hard, and yeah. too many people try that. It's something we try to kind of like throw it around between us, but yeah. there's only so much you can really do. We yeah, found, you like know, a, a lot of the time we might be talking over each other to get a question in, but mm -hmm. I still feel that, like Derek said, the dynamic is a good one. Ask something when it comes to your mind, because you know what, it's a genuine question. Yeah, well, Derek, a massive thank you for, for coming to meet us today. No problem, Tom. Um, and sure, you might see us knocking around RT. I hope you can use it. Well, they're, 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 they're advertising for deputy editors at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You can always apply. Give us a try. Give us a try. Well, uh, Just add that to the bottom of the list. Of <laughs> you may not know this yet, but you are actually going to be our first critic of our show reel whenever we do get it done, um, and before we send it away, um, we're going to send it over to you. Well, there'd be nothing I'd be saying that would make it right or wrong. You do, if you do do it, do something that you think is good yeah. and that you're happy with, and nothing I could tell you is going to make it right. Because if I was listening to people telling me that's not right to this, I'd never be anywhere. You have to go with your instinct, yeah. what works and what feels right for you. All I'm suggesting is genuinely mm -hmm. is that there's possibly a kind of odd little niche for yeah. three fellas who are doing something that three other guys aren't doing. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, you see, you three here, who cares? Be looking, 
go to Britain, they might take you more seriously. Yeah. If you go to Britain, they might see it as kind of more of a novelty and more yeah. Yeah. interesting. More novelty, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And think, actually, there could be something in this three, these three lads and blah, 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 and you're long, young and you look young. And I could see it. I mean, if I was there, I could see how they would do it. You'd be sent off for a makeover, blah, 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 blah. You know, but they'd make, make it look different. Ah, no, <laughs> not different. It, it would just look shit hot. And it would look relevant to that all. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Well, honestly, we have enough to be working with. But honestly, I I, I wouldn't be embarrassed about it because no. I banged down their door. I, I, yeah. I was overwatching. That's what we have Colin for. Colin actually got called out by the two Johnnies live Do on you our. Ever watching Practical Jokers? Of course I do. You know more. Yeah. The one that they're always. You get yeah. the impression they really don't like it. Yeah. They give <laughs> they, them a lot they, of. I don't think they do. I think they almost <laughs> resent him because it's. You could tell when somebody's joking. Or, it doesn't feel right to me. Yeah. But apparently he was the guy who started that whole thing. And he was the guy who persisted and wrote to all the networks and eventually got it accepted. They would have fuck all if it wasn't for him. Now we'd have. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, there was no U2 without Paul McGuinness. As he says himself, making the phone calls to the record companies from telephone boxes here in Dublin. And they were in London. You know, you need somebody who's able to actually do that. Oh stuff. no, we do, we do appreciate yeah. the rankings Colin yeah. goes to. Um, but that's true about your man Moore. Look that up. Yeah. Because uh, and when I watch that program, and I love it, right? But I think it's actually getting too cocky for itself now. I think, you know, they're, yeah, they're now so played, big. Yeah, it's played out, I think. Yeah. Uh, you're probably but a bit well known at this stage. Yeah, that's, yeah that's and everybody knows like, who they are. At the start, it was like, who are these who are guys? 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 Like, what they do, the funniest for me is the things when they're in the shopping centres. Yeah. And they're, you know, doing something stupid. That is the funniest. Or they're in those waiting rooms. Yeah, or the waiting rooms. They're, they're just so stupidly funny. But it, the guy, Iman Moore, it was him. It was all him. Boys, it was great to see you all. Good luck now. Thank I hope you all are you. Good luck at the much. next race that oh, you do. Uh, no, no, I don't get to take money. No, it's not. <laughs> Our budget does not stand for that. Um, was that the phone that was there a minute ago? Yes. Why have uh, you got such a big watch? Why do I have such a... I have just a small wrist. Why aren't you wearing one? Should be. I won't why aren't you wearing one? Left my hand. No, I don't have one at all, but it's unusual <laughs> to see. Well, it's all on the phones now, isn't it? Um, well, I actually had to send away my lovely iPhone this morning. This is my old phone. Um, oh, do it on your camera, would you? I'll scroll. You can scroll. So we did a competition. Uh, okay. Columns. Who sponsors it? <laughs> yeah, so um, we, we did a competition for our Facebook page um, to get our name out there a little bit more. So my lovely employers down in Waterford, the book centre. Are you there. working as well, are you? I work, yeah, I work in the book centre okay, in Waterford. What's, what are you doing in the book centre? Sell books? Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. And I approached my boss, Catherine, um, to see if she would do a, a competition with us just to help us get our name out there. And she was very obliging. She's very give, generous. Very generous. She's given us a 50 euro gift voucher to give away to one of our listeners uh, that can be used in any of our four shops in Waterford, Kilkenny, Wexford or Nace okay. or online at thebookcentre.ie and what we thought we might do is get you to pick the winner of the competition if that's okay with you. I have the list of names here ready for you to yeah, just pick it. It's all the same name. I just can see it's all the same name. Everybody's the same name. <laughs> <laughs> There's 20 people with the same name. Why should they all oh. say Greg Malal? <laughs> they all got the same telephone number. You said your surname, Greg Malal. Yeah. Okay. They've all got the very same number. <laughs> I can't see that because I don't have reading glasses on it. So I actually can't see that, would you believe? Oh. Oh, well, so. all you have to do is stop your finger. We're oh. going to scroll. Yeah. Do you want to video it? Uh, yeah. We are. Oh, we're we going to do the Facebook Live, yeah? Yeah. Okay, go not? Um... So I've got to scroll through them and just stop. Just stop. And and thankfully, gonna, I can't actually see them. And it's going to be the first. This is going to be the first name. So we'll wait. Tell me, are we live? No, not yet. This is just like the old days of Winning Street. Yeah. <laughs> Spinning the wheel around. Hi, this is Colin from In Conversation with coming to you live from Cafe Nero, just off Stevens Green. I am joined by my friend Gavin here, the co-host, What's up? and Greg is behind the camera. <laughs> and we are joined by we're joined by our guest this it was week. A naked Bosco hand. <laughs> <laughs> we're joined by our guest this week, Mr. Derek Mooney of well. RTE fame. And Derek is going to pick the winner of our competition in uh, in coordination with the Book Centre. Uh, we are giving away a fifty euro voucher that can be used in any of our stores in Waterford, Nace, Kilkenny, or Wexford, or online at thebookcentre.ie. Big thank you to my manager, Catherine Cavanagh, for allowing us this opportunity to run the competition. And Derek, whenever you're ready. Stop the Stop scrolling. The wheel. I am doing this randomly, clearly. Okay. Can you put in some sound effects and everything? Because I'm good at game shows, you see. So put in some sound effects. So you, you, I'm not even going to look down. You just tell me when to stop. And three, two, one. <laughs> oh! 
We can't. I'm sorry. Okay, I, think, I think we're going to have to go again. I think we're going to have to go again. We, we, we can't. Just for reference, that did land on my own name. That is weird. That's, that that's is weird. What are the chances of that happening? Uh, Other than that it's just one, your name all the way One in 178. 178, yeah. That is hilarious, Greg. Well, okay. Right, okay. <laughs> just do one, one long scroll up and we'll, yeah, and stop. Right. And our winner is... Was that one there? Yep, Shelley Kavanagh. So, Shelley, if you are seeing this, please get in contact with us and we'll uh, figure out how to send you the voucher. Thanks, everybody, for liking the page and getting involved. It won't be our last competition. We'll come back uh, very soon with another one. And we'll see you all very soon. Well done, Bye! <laughs>